Good afternoon. This is Tony. I, this is, I am Tony Dottino, founder of the USA Memory Championship and the host of this Saturday's USA Memory Championship qualifying rounds that we are co-working with uh, Memory League and the uh, Lumosity uh, organization. So August 7th is coming. We sent instructions out on Tuesday to everybody that had registered. And now the emails are coming back in with questions and uh, issues, which we're now looking to resolve on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and not on Saturday. So we're set and ready to go. The team is moving forward. And as I always say, uh, I don't think people ever understand the scope, the nature, and the amount of work that goes into hosting a memory championship. And it only has gotten, for me, a little bit more complicated doing it on virtual. But a uh, quick update, things are moving along. We got the team responding, getting the spreadsheets, getting back to people that have their questions, and uh, we're looking forward to having a really exciting event on Saturday. So any further questions, send me an email right now at adottino at aol.com. That's adottino at aol.com. Get those to me. I think my team members, are, I've got plenty that they're keeping busy with right now. Uh, I do have some time, though I'm... Not as busy, but busy enough, but I can get the emails and respond to them and get answers to people. Okay, pickleball, my goodness. I had a really, really interesting and fun conversation uh, this morning uh, with uh, a community of pickleball players. There's over 700 active members. I never, I've read about it. I read in my local neighborhood news that uh, they found that pickleball players are not as courteous as tennis players and that the pickleball players when they're finished playing walk across the tennis court when they're adjacent to one another and they just walk to the gate uh, and, and expect the tennis players to pause. That's about as much as I knew about pickleball until I had this conversation this morning and uh, have uh, been introduced to a uh, leader of a pickleball organization club of over 700 members, and they have over 100 people play every day. So what does that have to do with me? Well, one of the things that the client that I'm working with uh, wants to introduce to the pickleball community are elements of cognitive fitness and brain health. And so we call it mental fitness and how to maintain an active lifestyle physically as well as memory-wise, so have a mental fitness agenda that we'll do over a series of lessons. And we've been doing four 90-minute lessons with different groups of people over the last couple of years, and uh, uh, we're cooking and running and renting and doing great until COVID kind of put everything on suspend. And the pickleball players are at least playing outdoors, but we may, uh, in fact, we will hold off and doing anything with them until uh, it's safe, uh, the COVID uh, wave of the Delta variant clears, and uh, it's safe for people to come indoors and, and learn some things about memory. But here's what the fun part was of it, and as I was listening to the uh, person that leads the organization through their pickleball activities, it was fun to hear that there's a wide range of people that play from 20 years old up to an 80 year old, which is fascinating when you think of the age range, and I described some of the things that we've been doing in terms of presentations and getting people to access their memory and realize there's so much more that we can do with our minds than we ever thought possible. There are elements of brain health that we're learning that maintain mental fitness and memories and creativity and communication throughout our lives if we understood what those were and what the best activities and behaviors were that we needed to uh, discipline ourselves in being a part of. And so we went from there to uh, different activities we have in our memory competition. So remembering people's names and then building that and knowing that and building relationships that have some social interaction with that, uh, remembering uh, a list of things to do, we call it the to-do list, uh, the shopping list, uh, remembering strings of numbers. Uh, so there's a diversity of activities that we talked about and that there are skills that people can learn 
uh, to be able to improve their performance in all of those. And I went back through it and I said, look, if there's, that your members are of the mindset that, you know what, there's an improvement that they can make to their own cognitive fitness and mental fitness, and that they were willing to learn what those skills were, and then they would, we could get them to practice those skills in little bits. How about if we have a memory competition for the people that are in the pickleball association that decide they want to come to the workshops that we want to do? And, and, we, and we had fun with that because then the two people I was on the call with said, well, God, how about if we're a team? And so we said, okay, you know what? Rather than make this an individual competition for you know individuals that are going to participate, why don't we make it a team event? And, and so the host of the Pickleball League basically said, well, the Pickleball is usually played in teams of two. So I said, great, why don't we work as we establish the curriculum for the agenda? Why don't we uh, announce it as we're going to train teams of two to compete in a memory competition. So we'll do three or four sessions of learning and teaching. They'll have a, a week break to practice, and then we'll come back in week six or seven, and we'll actually have a memory competition. And boy, that's, this sounded like so much fun. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, from the host of the organization, he's just so charged up about it, and he learned he was previously a history teacher, so he found the work that uh, Michael Dottino has been doing is oh, totally fascinating. It was a real fun conversation and dialogue, and so spent a little bit of time today. I kind of this is going to go now to the next week agenda because of the memory championship, August seventh. But what we what we discovered is we're going to we're going to do this. So this is going to happen. We'll wait to see where COVID goes, but it's either going to happen in November or January. So there's not an urgency of when it has to happen. It's got to be safe. That's really the key. If we started it in November, we started again looking at the holidays, and boy, do people get through holidays safe and well, and then Christmas. So if we can't get it started by the uh, early part of November, we probably will defer till January. But the important thing was, important thing, is we'll do some teaching. You know, so Michael Dottino and I will work out what the curriculum will be, and tie that to the games that will be played in week uh, five, uh, of uh, our intervention with them. And it really was exciting. It, it was like, wow, you know, we've done this with organizations where we go into an organization at a annual conference that they bring people together and we teach, we teach some people that would want to be on stage to show that they can grab this stuff. And then we teach them the skills and then they get on stage and they compete in the organization. Who's got the, the best memory or what organization or department has the best memory. So this was a lot of fun. And uh, I'll learn more about pickleball as we go out and visit to the location where they have all these courts where over 100 people are playing every day. And then uh, you know, we then got into the time spots as to you know what's the best time zone to do these in. And the, most people there are wrapping it up by 8 o'clock. So we said, you know what, we can do 4 to 5.30 and people can go home and have dinner at that point in time. So it, it was a fun call, exciting. I. I uh, just from the enthusiasm of the host of the event, uh, this is going to be a fantastic uh, engagement that the uh, Memory Enterprises uh, team uh, focuses on and have a really terrific uh, competition that'll be fun. It, uh, you know, we'll organize it well, we'll do it in a, in a fun light, and uh, I think uh, this is going to be a, another a branch to what we're doing with mental fitness. And not only do you get the people to learn what the mental fitness is all about, but get them to then practice some of the elements of it and then bring them forward into some form of a competition. So my initial thoughts were, okay, cards are always people's favorites. I mean, who, who doesn't like to go learn how to remember the order of a deck of cards? Then the, what we call the word list or the shopping list and using the loci method for doing that, which then can be used for reading comprehension and retaining information that you have to for your work or policies or, uh, or uh, professional uh, promotions and things. And then, of course, names and faces. Uh, boy, remembering people's names and faces is going to be fun. How many names and faces can Michael and I remember of the people we'll meet during this uh, engagement we'll have? 
So that was uh, uh, something new that came out of uh, one of my Zoom calls that I had today, which was exciting. I had several other Zoom calls. So uh, I had a busy Zoom day today, bringing a series of different elements together from coming up with a memory competition with a group of pickleball folks that will be tied to their mental fitness. So there's a, this whole engagement around it that I think would be a whole lot of fun and excitement, but more importantly, making a difference in the lives of the people that want to learn what these skills are and then apply these skills and then uh, uh, test them in terms of a fun, friendly, peer-to-peer -peer event. So that's what, what today's uh, actions have brought um, back off to the August 7th uh, Memory Championship that's coming up and the events we have. We'll start with the Lumosity Games. Uh, they'll have 30 minutes to do those and then we'll move over to the Memory League games, and they'll have an hour and a half to go through the three different events that uh, will be staged there. And uh, August 7th, it's, uh, boy, months ago when we started on this, I mean, we had started on this in February. I mean, this is February, March, April, getting registrations, getting people in, getting instructions. What are the games? How do we intersperse all this? Uh, it's finally coming, and uh, boy, the team has put a lot of time and work and effort into this, and then as soon as that's done, we then start to plan for the on live, the in-person event uh, that we're going to be doing here in Orlando on October 23rd. So we will shift gears from one right to the next. And then last but not least in my uh, community, I've offered to the fun committee in my uh, HOA community uh, to possibly do a memory training followed with a memory competition here within our own community. So. That's where we're at today. Uh, everyone uh, have a good evening, stay safe. God, I, I, I almost get discouraged watching the news with the outbreaks of COVID and where they are and who's having them. So uh, please continue to be smart and, 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 and masking. God, I went to the store this morning and it's disturbing. A mother with three of her kids, not one of them had a mask on. And I'm like, okay. You not know, watch the news? I'd be in, like, what's going on? Let's be safe and smart, distancing, keeping the hands washing. All the things that we've learned as fundamentals. And uh, the important thing is to stay out of the hospital. See you on Friday. I, let me just think now. Friday is coming down to the end of our event, so I, I'll probably try to get on early on Friday morning if I can, and rather do my evening hour. But uh, I think there's a lot of great things going on, and as I've learned, from one of the meetings, like memory and how we retain information, maintain mental fitness is, is a hot topic. As more and more people worry about dementia and Alzheimer's and uh, forgetting things, uh, as I've said to them, we're going to eliminate the term senior moments. We're going to teach people what are some of the things that they can do to improve their, their mental fitness, but then use that, use that, those skills to enhance their professional lives, their academic lives, and uh, their overall self-esteem. So with that, for a close, uh, we'll see you on Friday.